So at a very basic level, when we start getting bigger, typically we're talking about multicellular as opposed to just very big cells, although there are exceptions. And these multicellular organisms, as they transition from being colonial to being a true multicellular organism, you get this cellular differentiation. And at its minimum, cellular differenti differentiation represents a differentiation between the soma, which is responsible for basically survival of the organism, and the germline, which is responsible for producing the next generation. And then, as I had pointed out at the beginning of this lecture, we all have this inner microorganism. The, the tendency, even among big multicellular organisms, is to pass through a single cell state, so gametes and then the zygote, uh, before the establishment of the next generation. And although we're not going to get into that uh, to any great degree because of time constraints, um, one of the things that is established when you go through a single cell state is that all of the resulting cells in the multicellular organism are genetically identical because they're all produced mitotically except for occasional mutations. And so as a consequence, um, they, the survival and reproduction of any one of those cells is equivalent to the survival and reproduction from a genetic perspective of any of those cells. So the, the somatic cells, even though they don't contribute to the next generation, the fact that the reproductive cells have the same genotype means that their genotype is going to survive anyway, not through their own long-term survival, but through making sure that the germline survives and makes it to the next generation. But it's possible for cheaters to arise in the midst of these cells. And cheaters we view um, as things like tumors and cancers. They're cells that basically are no longer working for the whole organism. And to a degree, they may be working against the organism. If nothing else, they may be taking nutrients away from the rest of the organism um, without otherwise contributing to the organism. So you've got actually two issues that come up with multicellularity as, as severe costs. One of them is that you have what I describe as cheaters from without, parasites that can basically take over the, uh, the organism to some degree and make their way from cell to cell to cell, eating up the organism, chomp, chomp, chomp. And also you have the potential for what I call cellular... Uh, excuse me, cheaters from within, and these would be cells that mutationally are able to um, obtain more resources than really they deserve without contributing back to the organism sufficiently. And those would be um, cancers and tumors and things like that. And one of the things that a multicellular organism has to be able to achieve if it's going to become a multicellular organism is a means of protection both from these cheaters from without, these parasites, as well as predators and cheaters from within, this tendency of cells to at least potentially uh, become cancerous or become tumors and harm the organism. And to get away with at least the, uh, the cheaters from within problem, they go through this single-celled state, so all the cells are as identical as they can be. To get away with both the cheater from within and cheater from without problem, uh, multicellular organisms have sophisticated immune systems.